Hi everybody and welcome to a new video in the Melody Generation with LSTM Networks series. This time we're gonna get started with coding. Specifically, we're gonna start pre-processing our folk song dataset. If you've watched other videos or other series that I've published, you already know that pre-processing is an extremely important part of any AI or deep learning project. So this is no different, also for generative music. So we're going to spend this video and a, probably another couple of videos doing pre-processing on our data set. But let's get started. The first thing that I want to show you is my folder project structure. So here you see my project and we are at uh, video number three. So here obviously you have the preprocess.py file which is the file where we are going to be coding all of our pre-processing functions. And here you have the data set, which are left with this name Deutsch, which stands for Deutschland, which stands for Germany, right? And here we have a bunch of music collections and inside these music collections, we have a ton of Kern files or simple uh, songs in the Kern uh, format. Okay, so now you may be wondering about uh, where do, where should I uh, download this content? Where uh, it's quite simple, because you can go to the Essen uh, Folks on Database uh, website, and here, if you go to Humdrum Data Translations of the Database, you can then go to Europe over here, and then Deutsch Deutschland. Germany and here you can just like click over here and then uh, a pop-up window will appear at some point hopefully and then you can start downloading like a zip file with all all of the content here so you can unpack that and then you can put it in the folder good okay so let's get back here so uh, now, a uh, thing that I want to mention here is that, uh, so as I, as I mentioned, so here we have all of this uh, music, all of these folk songs that are in the Kern uh, format. So I'll show you one of these uh, files and how it looks like. So here, this is just an encoding for symbolic music. So I'm not going to explain you the details of this music representation, but uh, all you need to know really is that it's just like a music representation encoding for uh, symbolic music. And it's been uh, implemented by David Huron, who's a key figure in computational mu musicology. So Kern was developed in um, during the 80s, I believe, and in the context of a software that, well, it's more like a library or like a bunch of scripts that David Huron developed, which are called uh, Humdrum. So Hamdrum is this library where you can analyze uh, symbolic music and understand like different things like key or time signatures and things like that. Now, uh, Kern is the encoding, a uh, music representation used by the Humdrum software package. So if you want to learn more about uh, Kern and Humdrum, so you can go to this uh, website here. And yeah, you have all of the different resources here. So I'll leave the uh, link to the website in the description below. So if you're interested, you can check that out. Cool. Okay, so let's go back here. So yeah, let's close this and let's focus on our uh, pre-processing. Okay, so what we want to do here really is to arrive at defining a pre-process uh, function where we pass dataset path, which is the path to our current um, dataset, right? That we want to analyze. Okay, so for the time being, uh, I'm not going to implement this pre-process uh, function. And indeed, uh, it's going to take two or three videos for implementing all the different parts. But what I want to do here is to give you an idea of the different steps that we want to uh, apply to the data set in order to pre-process it. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do here is just very simple. We want to load the folk songs. Okay, and we're going to be using Music 21 for doing that. More on Music 21 in a, a couple of minutes or so. Cool. The second thing that we want to do here is to filter out songs uh, that have non-acceptable uh, durations, right? So 
We're going to be very strict on this one. So we're going to be using only a handful of node durations, the most common ones, and they're going to just like follow the basic hierarchical structure of node values. So 16th nodes, eight nodes and things like that. And this is just like to simplify everything and to keep it like easier like for the AI to pick up all the different patterns and understand time signatures and the way node durations should be used for different time signatures and different songs. Right. Okay. So once we filter out uh, songs that have known acceptable durations, the next thing is to uh, transpose songs to C major or A minor, depending on whether these are major or minor uh, songs. So we'll check this out like in during like this video. So yeah, stay tuned because this is quite cool. Okay, so once we've uh, transposed uh, the songs, the uh, next thing that we want to do is to encode uh, these songs. Um, so encode songs uh, in mu. Well, I should say with. Uh, music time series representation okay so if you don't remember <clears throat> what the music time series uh, representation is uh, you should just go back to my previous video in the series where I talked about this quite extensively so I'm not going to repeat myself here also if you don't know what keys are or transposition again just go back to my previous video because I covered that uh, quite in detail Okay, so now that we have the new encoding for these songs, we just want to save the songs. So we'll save songs to uh, a simple text file. And so we'll have a, a text file for each of the different uh, songs in the uh, data set. Okay, so this is in a nutshell the different things that we'll do for pre-processing our data set. Now, as I said, I'm not going to uh, implement all of these steps um, in this video, but uh, in this video I'm going to focus on these three steps here. So we're going to be loading the, the different songs. We're going to be filtering out songs uh, that have non-acceptable durations, and then we'll transpose songs to C major, A minor. The first thing that we want to do is to load the folk songs. And so for that, we can create a function that I can call load uh, songs in kern. And here we'll pass in the dataset uh, path uh, argument, right? And so this is just the path to the current data set. Okay, so the, the here we should do a bunch of things. So the first one is to um, go through all the files in um, the data set, data set, and load them with music21. Okay. So for recursively going through all the uh, folder structure in our Foxon dataset, we want to use the OS package. So we need to import that. So we'll do an import OS. So here we'll do for uh, path subdir and files in os.walk and we'll pass in dataset path, right? Okay, so what this does, what OS Walk does, it's basically just recursively goes through all the files and the, the folder structures given a parent folder. So the path is uh, a reference to the path of the current folder. Subdeers uh, sub are all the subdirectories, uh, the subfolders in the path, and then files are all the files in the uh, parent, the current folder. Okay, so now we want to go through all the path, uh, all the files, right? One by one. So we'll do a for file in files. Okay, now we need to load these files, but we don't want to load any file. We just want to load current files. And uh, the reason why we should filter out non-current files is because in our data set, we have non-current files. So let's take, for example, like this test folder here. So these are all current files and it's all 
good and well, but this CK sum is not a current file. It's some kind of like metadata stuff and we don't want to uh, load that. Okay, so how do we filter that out? Well, we can use the uh, formats uh, that we use for uh, indicating that a file is a current file. So if you look at the final three characters here in a file name of current files, you'll see that it has these KRN uh, formats. And so we can use that for filtering out non-current files. So we should say if file and we just take a look at the final three characters and if these like final three characters in the file name are equal to KRM, then it means that indeed we are dealing with a current file and so we can process it or specifically we can load it. Okay. So here we load it by using music 21. So let's import music 21 and I'll import it as M21 because otherwise it's too long to write. Okay, now if you don't have music 21 installed, as is probably the case, you can just fire up the terminal and easily pip install music 21 like this. I'm not gonna do this because I've already done it. So, okay. Great, okay, so for loading this song, uh, we're gonna be using a basic function from a music 21. So we'll do music 21 converter dot parse. And here we should pass the full path for, uh, for the current file, okay? So for doing that, we can do os.path.join uh, and we'll join the path which is the path of the current folder we're in and we'll join that with the with the file which is just the the file name okay so this uh, should be the the song right okay so now um, you may be wondering but um, what's the format of this song and what's like m21 or music 21 all about well uh, I gave you a little bit of an intro, well, a really high level overview of Music 21 in the first video of this series, but let me dig a li little deeper into that. So Music 21 is a package that enables you to uh, manipulate symbolic uh, music uh, data. It enables you also to load and convert files, music uh, symbolic files from certain formats to other formats. So for example, you can have files in current format or MIDI format or music XML format, and then you can pass them with music 21. And then if you want, you can save uh, this uh, music into again, current, MIDI, and so on and so forth. Uh, so in other words, you can use Music 21 just like as a converting tool. So if you are um, doing some work with a symbolic uh, music data, then Music 21 is definitely like a very good tool for like converting files like from one format to another. Now, Music 21 is way more than that. So as I said, it, it, Music 21 comes with a lot of like methods for analyzing music, for, for example, estimating like the key. We're gonna see that method in action today but also just for a representing music. This is like the real core. Music 21 enables you to represent music in an object-oriented uh, manner, which is great. Now, let me show you how this uh, works. So this is like a Music 21 score. So or it's kind of like a simple representation of all the things that go on with Music 21. So you have a score, so it's a piece of music. And so you have a bunch of objects that are hierarchically related to each other and which represent a song. So the overall, like the high, highest level object is the score itself. Now a score can have some metadata where you can provide information about title, the name of the composer, and a bunch of other stuff. But then a score has, uh, can have multiple parts. Now the parts are the equivalent to like an instrument line. Okay, so each part, which is an object in itself, can have multiple measures. The term measure 
is equivalent to the term bar that we used uh, in the previous video, right? So we, a, a part has multiple measures or multiple bars, right? And then the, part, the, the measures can contain the clef, for example, the treble clef or the bass clef, a time signature object, a key object, and just the notes, right? Or rests. The great thing about this uh, representation is that each of these elements are objects and they have their own attributes, they have their own methods, and you can easily manipulate them. Now, I know this feels a little bit abstract, so I'm going to give you like a simple uh, example about how this like works in, uh, in practice. So let's focus on this simple score notated in the typical Western music notation, right? So this is a string quartet, well, this is just a, a passage from a string quartet by Mozart, where we have like four instruments, viol first violin, second violin, viola, and cello, right? So let's assume this is the whole score. This is the whole composition. So uh, in Music 21 uh, wording, the whole thing is called a score, right? So the score is the, the whole thing, and it's an object in itself. Now, uh, we have multiple parts in the score, and these uh, correspond to the different instrument lines. So here I've just highlighted a couple uh, of parts, so for first violin and viola, but indeed in this case we have four different parts. I just haven't highlighted violin two and cello just not to mess up the whole uh, slide here. Good. Okay, so each part has multiple measures, and here we uh, with this, uh, yeah, other like uh, color here, we have highlighted the four different measures that make up the viol viola uh, part here. Now, inside the measures, we have a bunch of notes here. Like for example, here with this blue squares, you'll see we have six notes, right? And beyond the notes, we also have objects that represent the time signature, which in this case is three, four, the clef, and this weird clef here is called an alto clef, and then the, the key. Okay, so this is uh, more or less the intuition be, uh, be behind Music 21, right? Now, I'm not going to get really into the details because that would be kind of a a course all in, in itself if we want to like understand more about Music 21. But if you're really interested about this, so you can go to the um, Music 21 documentation website and it's really well done and you're gonna get a very deep idea of how this package works and how you can do a bunch of different things uh, with it. Good. Okay, all of this to say that this song variable here is just a Music 21 score, or I should say it's a stream, where stream is the base uh, class for objects like score and parts. Okay, good. So now we have our own song, but uh, the point is, is that we, we want to load all the songs, right? And so we want to store them in a, um, a list. So I'll create an empty list called songs. And here I'll just do a songs.append and I'll pass in uh, the song, right? Okay, so once we're done here, we can just uh, return uh, songs. And this should be it. So with this, we should be able to load all uh, the songs from our data set as long as we pass a valid data set path. Good. And talking about a, a valid data set path, so let me just create a uh, constant here and I'll call this kern data set uh, path. And so I'll just pass in Deutsch and uh, test. Yeah, so we're going to just play around with this test folder here just because we have very few uh, files in it. So this is just very fast to, to, to execute whatever we decide to do. Okay, so now uh, let's um, update this pre-process um, function with the uh, load function that we built. And so first of all, let's just print a statement where we'll say loading 
um, songs, right? Then after that, we'll do a songs is equal to load songs in kern, and I'll pass in the dataset path. And finally, I'll do another print here uh, where I want to say loaded the length of the songs, songs, right? Okay, so that we know how many songs we've uh, loaded. But now I just want to see if this is working okay. So, uh, so what I'll do is I'll just create a simple script here. So if name is equal to main, so what we'll do here is we'll load uh, this songs and we'll do load songs in kern and I'll pass in the kern dataset path over here. And so I just want to be sure that we have the right amount of elements in the list, which should be 12. So I know that this 12, so we have 12 current files in the test folder, right? Okay, so print and we'll say um, loaded. Len of songs. I'll say learn loaded this songs, okay? And then we'll do another thing, uh, which is gonna it's basically relying on another like magic method that comes from Music 21. So we'll just isolate a song. We'll just take the first song in the songs list. And so we'll do song is equal to songs at index zero. And now we'll do a song dot show. Right. Okay, so remember this song is a Music21 object and it has this uh, show uh, method which is going to fire up MuseScore and it's going to render our song uh, in a very nice way. Cool. So you can do this as well, but probably you, when you do this the first time you're going to get an error and that's because you have to set up the an environment variable that tells Music21 that you want to use uh, MuseScore, for example, for uh, rendering the um, like this music. Okay, so if you want to learn more about how to do that, because I'm not going to bother <laughs> doing that uh, in this video, so you should check out this music twenty one dot environment um, page in the music twenty one documentation. Again, I'm going to um, put this in the description below, so don't worry. Okay, so let's go back here. Okay, so now if uh, I if we don't have like um, mistakes in the code, we should be able to to see this. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Yes, nice. Okay, so here we have Muse, Muse score with the first song here. Uh, this is the title of the song, which obviously is in German. Uh, right, and here we have the whole song. Now let's see how many um, songs we've loaded. Yeah, we loaded twelve songs. Right, so this is so the our load songs in current uh, function is working well. Now, obviously, this is not the way you evaluate whether like a function is working correctly or not. You should use unit tests, but obviously, I'm not going to bother. <laughs> implementing unit tests for this tutorial. So if you want, you sh you can do that, and it's definitely a good exercise. Uh, good. Okay. So now let me just uh, close this because we've seen that this works, which is nice. Okay. So now on to the next step. So we want to filter out songs that have uh, non-acceptable durations. So for doing that, obviously we'll need another function. Uh, which is going to be a boolean function and I'll call it has acceptable uh, durations okay and here we'll pass in the song so this is the song in, uh, in music 21 right and uh, as I said this is a uh, boolean function so it's gonna either return true or false depending on whether all the notes and rests 
in the song are acceptable, right? So here we need another argument talking about acceptable uh, durations. That's called acceptable durations. Okay, so let me pass this for the time being. And so this is going to be another constant up here. So acceptable durations. And so these are all the durations that we accept. And these are expressed in quarter length, quarter not length. Right? So one in this case is going to be equal to a quarter note uh, value. And so we'll start from 0 0.25 that we know is a sixteenth note. And we know this is the, uh, the actual the step that we use in our time series representation. So each time step is equal to 0 0.25 um, quarter uh, length. Okay, so we have 0 0.25, then we have 0 0.5, which is a eighth note, then we have 0 0.75, and this is called a dotted, this is a dotted note. So basically we take a, um, in this case, a eighth note, and then we add a sixteenth note uh, to it. So a dot basically adds half of the value of the current note value to the note value. Okay, then we have um, one, which is our quarter note. Then we have 1.5, which is a, a dotted um, quarter note. Then we have two, which is a half note. Then we have three, which is just three quarter notes. And this is fundamental for three quarter time signatures. And finally, we'll accept the whole note or four. Okay, so these are all our acceptable durations. So now we should check whether our song only has acceptable durations. If that's the case, we'll just flag that with a true. Otherwise, we'll say, no, this is false. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, obviously, we need to take all the notes and rests and analyze them one by one. So for doing that, we'll do a, oops, we'll do a four note in we'll take the song and here we're going to use certain attributes um, of, a, of a stream of a music 21 stream uh, object the first one is called uh, flat so what flat does basically is it just uh, flattens the whole uh, song structure score structure and it flattens all the objects into a single list right but obviously here we just we don't only have um notes and rests we also have objects like key time signature and we are not interested in that so we need to get rid of those luckily for us there's a another attribute that does that for us so this is called notes and rests so what this does basically just filters out all the objects that are not notes or rests um, objects. Okay, so the only uh, objects now that we have in this list are notes. Okay, this is what we expected. So these are notes, music twenty one note objects. So now, how do we check whether these notes have acceptable duration so we can just say if note dot uh, duration duration is an attribute of a music 21 note and we want the duration but in quarter length quarter length uh, if note uh, dot duration dot quarter length um, not in uh, acceptable durations then we return false right it suffices to have just one uh, duration that it's not acceptable and we'll just like flag this uh, song like having non-acceptable duration. Now, you may be wondering, but why are we doing this? Well, it turns out that we want to simplify quite a lot like the, the not durations because like it's going to like make life easier for our uh, deep learning model. And at the same time, it's going to be uh, the majority of our songs, as we'll see, 
uh, are going to have just this acceptable uh, node. So we're not really losing like much information, much data from our d initial data set, which is good. Okay. If this doesn't happen, then we've gone through all the nodes and they are all acceptable because we've never entered this um, um, if statement, right? And so we should return true here. Okay. So this should work. So now let's uh, implement it here in the preprocess thing. Okay, so obviously one thing uh, to say here is that uh, in the preprocess, after we've loaded the songs, so we have a list with all the songs, but now we want to analyze them one by one. So we need to just create a for loop and analyze each song individually. So we'll do it for song in songs, and then we'll do all of these things one by one. So first thing, we want to filter out songs that have non-acceptable uh, uh, durations. Okay, so for doing this, we'll do a if not has acceptable duration, We'll pass in song and the current, sorry, it's not the current data set path, it's the acceptable durations list. So if we, so if the current song doesn't have acceptable duration, so what should we do? Well, we should just ignore the current song. We should skip it, not pre-process it. And so we'll just do a continue. So we'll skip the song and go back to uh, the next uh, song in the songs uh, list. Okay, as simple as that. Good, okay, so now uh, let's see if this has acceptable durations works or not. So we can use like our tiny little script down here. And so let's do a print and we'll say has acceptable duration and so we we want to basically see if this song has an acceptable duration and so here we should just pass a song to the has acceptable durations uh, function and so here we'll pass in song as well as uh, acceptable durations okay so now let's run this and see what results we get from here. And then we'll check the results uh, against the, the rendered song, right? Okay, so let's go. Okay, yeah, whatever, we'll restore that. Okay, so uh, sorry about that. So if we take a look at this, we see that uh, basically like this function is telling us that uh, the, the current song that we are analyzing uh, has acceptable durations, okay? So let's see if that's uh, true. Okay, over here. So this song is in 6-8. So here we have an eighth note, quarter note, dotted eighth note. This is that 0.75 um, quarter length uh, value, dotted um, quarter note, 1.5, uh, quarter length uh, duration, right? Then we have 16th nodes, and yeah, we just use those uh, node values. And indeed, these are all acceptable um, node uh, durations. So yeah, this is correct. So uh, it seems that this function is working properly. The this guy here, so it has acceptable durations. Right, now there's one last bit uh, that remains to be done uh, for this video, which is transposing songs to C major and A minor. Okay, so for doing that, we'll need yet another function and we'll call this uh, transpose, right? Okay, and this uh, function uh, accepts a music 21 score, right? And okay, so here there are a bunch of things that we, we need to do. So first of all, we want to get, we, we want to try to get the key 
from the score, from the song directly. Because uh, in most of these songs, the, the key is actually notated. So we just want to retrieve that. Okay. But in some of these songs, the uh, key is not notated. And so in that case, we want to estimate key using music 21. And as I said, music 21 is a very powerful package and it also has some methods that enable you to guess estimate uh, a key for uh, a piece of music. Okay, so now once we have the, the key, either by retrieving it or by estimating it, we want to um, basically uh, get the interval for transposition. So let me explain what this means. So let's assume our song, so let me say like this. Uh, let's assume our song is in B major, right? And so we said that we want to transpose that to C major, right? So for doing that, we should transpose our song uh, by an interval. So what's that interval? So we should check the calculate actually the uh, distance the interval between b which is the tonic for b major and c which is the tonic for c major and use that interval and transpose the current song by that interval to move from b major to c major right okay in this case uh, if we are going up the, the, the interval between B, B and C is going to be a minor second, just a step on, on a piano keyboard. If we're going, if we are going down instead, uh, we can just like transpose it by a major seventh, right? And we'll move from B to the C, which is at the octave below. Okay, so that is like a next step that we want to do and uh, finally we should just transpose a song by a uh, calculated uh, interval right and for that we can use yet another magic magic uh, method uh, from music 21 okay so now let's implement this okay so how do we get the key from uh, the song now uh, I've analyzed like these songs and I saw that uh, the key is usually stored in the uh, first measure of the first part of the score, right? At a specific index, at a specific uh, index number four in the measure um, list, right? Okay, so let, let's try to understand how to extract that information. So. First of all, we want to extract the parts from the score. If you guys remember, so let me just like show this here. So a score has multiple parts and I want to extract only the parts here from the score. Okay, so for doing that, I can do song.getElements by class. And here, this method is very powerful because it enables us to uh, get all the elements uh, that have a given class, right? And here, the elements that we want to get are the elements that have class m21.stream.part, all the part objects. All, basically, I, I want to get all the parts here. Okay, so after I get all the parts, I want to get measure. Um, I want to get the measures at part zero, so the first part, right? Okay, so how should we do that? Well, we can do parts, and parts is going to be a list, right, of parts. So I'm just going to get the first part, and then I'm going to do a get elements by class and this time I want to get all the measures in part zero at index zero so I'll do music 21 stream dot uh, measure good 
Okay, so now I have all the measures. Now I can finally extract the key. And so I'll take all the measures for part zero. Then I'll take the first measure in that part. And then in that measure, which is a list, I'm going to uh, retrieve the uh, item at index four. And that usually, like in this uh, data set, is basically where the key is uh, stored, the key object is stored. And so this is going to be a music 21 key object that has a bunch of attributes and we're going to leverage some of this in a second okay so here we've extracted the key now uh as you might have understood i could have just like used one line and i could have chained like all of this um operations but i prefer to do it this way because like it's easier to read okay so it may be that we don't have a key for a given folk song. Okay, if that's the case, we still need a key. And so we can estimate the key. But first of all, how do we know that we don't have a key for um, the current song? Well, we know that if we have a key, this key variable is a music21 key object. So we could say that if not is instance, so if the key variable is not an instance of m21.key key, then we know that we don't have a key, right? So, and that means that the, the song doesn't have a key stored. And so now we can just update this key variable saying that key is equal to song.analyze and analyze is another magic piece of magic coming from music 21 and we can pass in the uh key um key right and basically what di what this does is a uh, music 21 understands that it has to guess the key for this song and it creates a key object over here good okay so now we have a key the next step is to calculate the interval for transposition. But here we have to go two paths depending on the mode of the key. So if we have a uh, piece with a major mode, then we should uh, transpose to C major. If we have uh, a piece which is in a minor mode, then we should move to A minor. So let's uh, just handle these two options. So we'll say that if key dot mode, where mode is a attribute for uh, the key uh, object music 21. So if this is equal to major, then we want to create an interval object. So what is this gonna, interval object gonna look like? So here we should say m21 dot interval interval so here we are instantiating an interval uh, object and here we should pass a couple of uh, peaches a couple of peach objects and so uh, here we pass in the key tonic which is a peach object music 21 peach object and then we should instantiate a, a peach object uh, for C, for the C pitch, right? So for that, we'll do M21 pitch, pitch, and then we'll pass in C. Okay, and so here, this interval is just an object that uh, is calculated by um, basically like calculating the interval between the tonic and our C pitch, right? Okay. Now, if we are not dealing with uh, a major mode, we are dealing with a minor mode, right? So in the case of minor mode, so we can just duplicate this, move here. Basically, the interval is gonna be more or less the same. Only difference is that we, here, we want to see the uh, interval between the tonic of the key and A because we're moving to A minor. Okay, 
Good. Okay, so now we have the interval. So the final thing that remains to do is to transpose the song by uh, the that interval. So we'll have a transposed song, and this is going to be equal to um, song dot uh, transpose. Suppose, and we should pass the interval over here. Remember, this is not just a, uh, this is not an integer. This is a uh, an object. is a music twenty one object called interval. And transpose once again is another music twenty one uh, trick that we can use on stream and score objects. Good. Okay, so by now we should have a transposed song, and so we can do return transposed song. Okay, so we should be done here. Now, uh, why are we transposing all of these songs to C major and A minor? Well, the thing is, is that we really don't want to learn about all the different keys because these songs uh, in the um, ascent data set are going to be like in all the 24 keys, most likely. But uh, I mean, we don't want to learn uh, like keys. We just want to like reduce everything to C major and A minor, so that uh, the um, the the model is going to learn just A minor and C major without the need to um, generalize to all the twenty four keys. If we do that, the great thing is that we can use way less data than we would need for having the the model learning like all the 24 keys. Now, if you really want to have the model learning all the 24 keys, what you should do is just take everything, all your data set, uh, transpose it to C major, A minor, and then transpose that into all the 24 keys so that you have like all the data set transposed in all the possible 24 keys. But that is going to be a, a huge data set and we don't want to uh, spend all of that computation on that for this uh, tutorial. Good. Okay, so now uh, we should add this uh, transpose function here in the pre-processing process. Okay, so here uh, we can just say that song is equal to transpose and we'll pass in the song. As simple as that. And so here we are done with the pre-process function for the time being. We can update our script to see if the um, transpose function works by saying transposed song is equal to uh, transpose and then we'll pass in song and then after we've uh, shown the the song in its original key then we can show the transposed song okay so to see if there is any change in in the song itself okay so another thing that i want to do here is just to print the key here so that we know what's the original key for the song and then we can compare that against like the the new song right okay so now let's see if this works hopefully it does nope we have uh, an issue here so the song object doesn't have any transpose all oh, right <laughs> yes there's a typo it's not transpose, it's transpose. Let me ch double check this one. Yes, it works. Okay, let's rerun this. Okay, yes, it seems to be working fine. Okay, so the the key for the uh, original, the original key for the song is E minor. So let's just check it here. Yeah, and it is indeed uh, E minor. So if you, for example, like take a look at this last note here, this is E, so it is E minor. Um, okay, so let me just uh, play this for you guys so that we'll compare this against the transposed version. Okay. Nice little tune in E minor. Okay, so I'll close this. 
and OK. So here we have the new, uh, we have the transposed song. And as you can see, it's been transposed up and it now ends on A, which basically means we are now in A minor. So let's listen to this. Nice. So it seems to be working. So we've transposed uh, effectively our song from E minor to A minor. Good. Okay, so with this, this was quite a long video. And as I mentioned to you guys, so pre-processing, it's quite intense like as a process. Whatever like you're doing in AI music, AI audio, or just deep learning or machine learning in general. Right, so now you have an idea of how to start doing pre-processing and playing around with a few Music 21 uh, methods and objects. So in the next video, we're gonna go to, we're, we're gonna move like to the next step. And uh, this is gonna involve encoding the songs with Music Time Series, saving the songs to text file. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this long video. If that's the case, leave a like. And if you haven't subscribed so far, please remember to do that and activate the notification bell to receive all the content that I'll be publishing. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And that's all for today. I'll see you next time. Cheers.